first time to a real cool event. Hands up. Um, thank you for coming. Um, so this is our remote code. This here you see our, our network needs. So um, you can see the, the bases, approach them, say hi. And so this is our web page, uh, email address, Facebook, Slack, mailing and everything. So this is on the slides on the email. Our goal is to provide women to an avenue with uh, intact, to empower women with the skills they need to admit, uh, for advancements in their professional careers, to build environments where networking and mentorship are valued, and to create a global community to support women in tech wherever they live. Right? So how do we do this? This is what we do. We organize technical events such as this, and we, uh, as well as a couple of other soft skill events. So if you have uh, anything you would like to see, any topics that you'd like to hear about, let us know. Or if you would like to talk on any events or events, let us know too. Okay. We have our code review, a monthly code review newsletter that from the Women Who Code Global. And we have this thing called hashtag applaud her. So uh, if because for us women, we are quite shy in our achievements, but we would like to basically shout out to all these ladies who have an achieve, who have you know, reached any milestones or achievements in their careers. If you got a new job, let us know. Or if you know any of your colleagues or friends who got a new job, do a hashtag applaud her. Or if you got a raise or got an award, do a hashtag applaud her. Let's celebrate together, right? And we also have our scholarships and also uh, give out conference tickets. These can all be found on the newsletter. So do sign up. As well as we have a job board. So uh, check out our job board. It's quite different from your usual like job street or anything like that, where we actually tell us uh, what you want from your job and we'll give you a list of the available measures. Yeah. So I'd like to thank our hosts for providing us the venue and um, feeding us today. Um, so, <laughs> I don't think... Is Yop there? No. Hi, Yop. So, uh, give us a few words about PayPal. Sorry? You'd like to give us a few words about PayPal? Sure. <laughs> so, yeah, welcome, everyone. So, uh, I'm a long time in PayPal. So, I've been in 12 years already, so I know quite a lot about PayPal. So, PayPal, at the moment, I think, uh, uh, we, we have we support almost uh, 24 di different currencies uh, in PayPal. Uh, we are in uh, 200 plus countries. Um, uh, so, so it's a it's quite a, a big market. Uh, the uh, the payments industry, uh, and we are uh, launching into different markets. And I'm actually for, uh, from the professional services team, which works in uh, helping the integration with the large merchants. Amazing solution architect in PayPal. So uh, I actually didn't prepare for this. So uh, so that's all. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Lovely. I love the pizza. Okay. Um, sorry, my name is Yulin. <laughs> Forgot to introduce myself for this. So I'll be handling the data scraping part of this workshop, and Olga will be. Where's Olga? I show uh, take over when it comes to data cleaning. All right, let's start. Okay, so what's data scraping, right? Basically, getting data off the open internet. Uh, it doesn't have to be the open internet, so anywhere. But what we get, we have web scraping, screen scraping, data mining, web harvesting, all these are web scraping, right? Data scraping. 
and it could even be from your internal database as well. It's still considered uh, data scraping. So why data scraping? We do data scraping to gather and process large amounts of data. We call it data scraping. So we, from this uh, text information, we gather information from this text uh, images or anything like that, we compile it into something that is uh, useful. So what's the process? We get the data, retrieve it, pass the data for your information, store the information, and move on to another page and repeat. Right. So for today, uh, for the data scraping part, these are a couple of things I'd like to cover. Uh, if time allows, we'll cover all these. The URL lib is the uh, Python uh, web page module, basically. Web browser module is called the URL lib. Then we'll do a couple of uh, file download. APIs and also to introduce to you the beautiful soup module as well as the selenium module. I'll get to those modules when we get to them. All right. And then after that, uh, Olga will be doing the data cleaning. All right. So so you have all installed Anaconda. If you install Anaconda, just launch your Jupyter notebook. Navigate to the GitHub <coughs> that you have downloaded. Yeah. Everybody following? Anybody? It's not. Sorry. Um. A workshop assistance. Please stand up. <laughs> Sorry. Idli over there. And stand up, please. Workshop assistant. No. <laughs> okay, only the, okay. Yep, Hannah will help herself. <laughs> All right. Um, yep. If any questions, just raise your hands. Did Did somebody raise your hands for a question just now? Yeah. You need the. You need help. Sorry. All right. Everybody have uh, you have the downloaded the GitHub uh, repository. Okay. Okay. So, what we have done here, we have just launched a Jupyter notebook. Okay. Um, everybody okay at this point? Following? All right. So, just navigate to the notebook folder and we'll be just are looking at the scraping for my part and later on they'll look at the data cleaning for Oga. Okay. So just click on the data scraping notebook and you have this. So who have never used Jupyter Notebook? Science. Okay. Yeah. Jupyter Notebook is great because it's a, it gives you an interactive uh, version of uh, type uh, coding in Python, right? So what I'd like you to do is basically to run each, each of these is a cell. One, two, three, these are a cell. Each of these are considered a cell. To run the cell, just hit shift enter and you run it. So it looks like this. This is the so-called the source code, but this is the markdown language. So if you just do shift enter, you run that cell, okay? Similarly, shift enter, and basically, when you see a code cell, do a shift enter, and we'll carry on from there. Okay, so is this okay? Is this too small? No, okay, okay, all right, good eyesight. Okay, 
So we'll be doing this in Python 3. Why I want to say to uh, say this because uh, for okay. Python 3 and Python 2 is very different libraries. Python 2 you use URL lib2. Okay, for Python 3 is all um, combined together in the URL lib and URL lib has a couple of uh, packages. This is not exclusive, but the core packages is urllib.request, urllib.error, urllib.parse, and robotparser. Right. So mainly we'll be using a urllib.request tonight. Okay. So this is what you do. All you do is import the urllib.request, set the link. And that's how you retrieve a page. Just do a URL open. And that's it. And you just read the HTML. Okay. okay. So if you want to read it instead of a binary value, you can read it as a HTML file. This is what you do. Just put the code UTF dash it. Okay. All right. So this is how we do web scraping, right? We get the information, we retrieve the HTML page, and we read the HTML page and get the data we want. So what happens with any web page? We get errors, whether the server is down, you get a broken link, anything like that. So it's very important when you do uh, for your production uh, data scraping, you need to anticipate all these errors that will happen at some point or another. Okay. So let's do it again. Import your lib request as R and do that. Okay. So you will get uh, encounter errors when you do data scraping. So this is what you do. Using your lib.error, try to open it. If you get an error, do an exception. So if you're familiar with how the web pages, uh, internet, how the internet works, so when you send a request, usually you have to send a header as well. For most browsers, they definitely send in the header, the browser, it's um, what browser is using, and even the user agent. So right here, we are adding two headers. We are adding the user agent and saying that this browser, I'm using the uh, Mozilla 5.0 browser. It doesn't matter that I'm not actually using Mozilla. I'm just telling the... Uh, I'm just telling in my request that, okay, this just uh, assume that I'll be the Mozilla. Right? So, same thing, I'm using, I'm requesting the same URL, lib, uh, URL tool. So, what happens is that in order to block robots, basically, a simple thing what they do is they check whether you have a header. So, this here, it doesn't have the header. So, I will just need to add the header and I can retrieve the page. Okay? If you still get any problems retrieving the page, what you can obviously, um, well, all the ways you can check is by basically putting robots.txt in the HTTP site, the website itself. For example, this here we have this one. Right, so this here, this is the URL, right? We just grab the site name. see what the robot is looking for. Well, what sort of uh, screen measures they look for, for to check for robots, right? Okay. So this is just another way, uh, another way to uh, request for the URL is to build an opener. 
So the benefits of using an opener is that once you have set the header, you don't have to add the header again and again for each of your requests. So all you need to do is just change the URL and that's it. For this, you have to add a header for each request. For each new request, you have to add a header. And with this, you add the header and for sub all subsequent requests, you can just add, use the different URL. And yet another easier method is by using the request library. So this is a different library that has uh, inputted the basic functionality of checking of a HTML page. So very simple, you just need to import request and just request for the URL and it'll take care of all the headers for you. Okay. And like any text, this is just the, the uh, binary content. <coughs> okay. So very easily, right here, I'll just show you how to just get a file download. So straight here, if you look at this page, data.gov.my, this here, there's a download button here. Grab this link, and this basically allows you to download the file for uh, Malaysia's dengue cases. Okay? So this is the link right here. This is the same link. So let's run this. What we are doing here is we are setting the output file, file name of the output file, and we are putting the URL for the file download that we got from this page right here. And a very quick, simple way to retrieve the file and then save it to this output path, just need to do a request dot URL retrieve and there you go. And then if you look here, you'll be there. Downloaded at 7 p.m. Okay? You should see this once you have run this cell here. You should see this in your folder. Everybody all good? Many should download the file. Okay, congratulations, you just scraped your first file. <laughs> okay, before I move on, uh, any questions? Anybody? Get some help over here. Uh, Edi? Oh, Olga, Olga can help too. <laughs> For the late comers, are you guys girls following? <laughs> Uh, what if I pass the word? A uh, safe payment. Okay. Capital S, capital P. Oh, Okay. Right here. PayPal guest? Yes, PayPal guest, safe payments. Got it? Oh, so password? Uh, safe payments. Any any problems? So now this is what needs to be opened. So you go to Anybody got problems, questions? Um, 
see the file that we are downloaded will be saved under this file directory, right? Yes. This yeah, this directory right there. So on this URL actually when you click on we click when you hit to the to the web page, we click there it will auto download the Yes. The, the that is the link to the file itself. itself. Okay, what about like um, extracting text from a web page? Let's say a new piece of news text. Is it the text from the web page? Yeah, let's like say, that? Yeah, let's say text. Is it is it is That's the text of the web page. Okay. Was that the only text in the web page? Can I, how do you no. like selectively? Okay, so this here, this is looking at the uh, first 300 characters oh. in the page. So if you get rid of the colon 300, you get the full web page. Okay. Okay, um, so if you don't have the request library, this is how you install the request library. Your lib comes with Python, it's one of the standard libraries, but the request library is, may not be. If you have installed Anaconda, I believe it's included. Okay. So this is the same. Okay, we've done that already. Okay, so I'd like to introduce you another way because um, this particular URL retrieve, this may be depreciated because it's one of the legacy uh, modules from Python 2. So they did stipulate on your documentation they may depreciate this URL retrieve. So another way of doing file download. This year we are going to download this file from data.gov.sg. So you navigate here, this link here, right? Is where we are going to download our file, which is the same as this. And we will save it as a zip file. Because the downloaded file will be a zip file. This is actually gives us a zip file. So once you have set that, again, I'm going to use an opener. Put in the headers, otherwise they won't let me download the file. And this here, with opener.openurl as response, an open file name, this file name, with a write as a byte, as out file. So what this does is, if these two are successful, then only you read the response and you write the data, you pipe the output into your file. Sorry, um, what is the point of making it a byte object? Because you are trying to pipe a zip file. Oh, okay. Right? So all these files that you're downloading, right, you don't know what format it's going to be. You don't really know whether you're going to be um, it's a text file or Excel file. For Excel file, definitely need to be a binary file. So binary is definitely a safer option. Okay, so let's check. Now you have a zip. All good? Okay. So, and that's our file download. Questions? Good. Okay, let's go to the meaty part. So web APIs, we all know what's a web API? Yep. Okay, so we just, um, when we grab data, a lot of sites actually provide APIs for you to get uh, core information. They don't want you to basically break their bandwidth, their web page bandwidth, what they do is they provide you with an API to be able to retrieve data. Okay? And 
most likely uh, the re response they give you back would be either in JSON or XML. These are the most the two most popular uh, format that they return your data to you, whether it's JSON or XML. So JSON is just a lightweight uh, format of XML. It's quite similar. It's just that instead of XML, you have tags, very much like HTML. It's the same format. In JSON, you have colon. I think it's colon, yes. So they replace the tags with uh, curly bracket and colon. It's also uh, in key value pairs. All right. So we scroll down, we'll be using the data.gov.sg API. So if you go to that site, you'll get, uh, you can search for the APIs. So first thing you do, import JSON, import pandas. Here, we'll do, uh, put it into a pen, uh, data frame. Get the data and put it in a data frame. Get the API link for this. If you scroll down here, there you go. That's the source. Oh, where's the API link? There you go. So you need to get the API link from the website themselves. <coughs> and this here will give you the data by sending this right there, for example. So the key, the key thing is this one here. You just need to copy that. And then you have your API link, which is this one. The only difference is I changed the limit. Okay, so let's run this. So we set our URL again. Import request library, and this here, we're just requesting the URL, and straight away we get our results. So this is a JSON format. You have your curly brackets and you have your key value pair with a colon. This is your key. This is your value. So in XML format, this would be open tag every week. 20, 12 week, 17, close tag every week. Right. So for JSON, we're just making it a lot shorter and save us a couple of bytes. So how do we parse it? Because this is a key value pair, best way is you just use the JSON library and you give you a dictionary. So for Jupyter Notebook, You can just add a cell anywhere. Run it, it'll give you what's in that object. You just need to add a cell, just add a cell anywhere, right? Click the add button, then you have empty cell. Type whatever codes you like. Explore. Okay? So you want to check what is this type. Run it, and there you get. Okay, so this is the best part about Jupyter Notebook. It's interactive. All right. So what do we have? We have our data, and it looks like this. So we have piped it into a JSON uh, dot loads and come out with a dictionary. And this is how our dictionary looks like, right? So we have the help result la da, and what we want is here the different diseases the week and the number of cases for that week for that disease. And we want dengue and malaria. So if we retrieve only the dengue and the malaria, let's set up our de uh, data, uh, data frame, which is a table format. This is the three, the two diseases that we want to look at, dengue and malaria. And we want to retrieve the epi week 
epidemiological week, disease, and the number of cases. So here, we set up the data frame, and then for each result and records, we want to retrieve the epi week, the disease, and the number of cases. And there we go. Now this year we don't have the column names, so let's just quickly set the column names and save it. Okay, make sure you save this because you'll be using this file later for August uh, workshop. Very straightforward. We just retrieve using API, retrieve a response that is in a JSON format, pass the JSON object into a dictionary, read the dictionary, and grab the data that we want. Okay. Any questions so far? How did we know that the API would uh, retrieve you have to test it. So most likely these sites, they have a API guide, so to speak, you know, a developer's guide for the APIs. They'll tell you what format it is, and from there you can uh, retrieve your data. Okay, so next, let's do a quick workshop. Same thing, just do exactly the same, just that like this one is going to be in XML. So for this, you will need to get a key. So just follow all these steps. So first, import the modules. API key from NEA, you should get this almost immediately in your email. Copy the key from your email. Following? Just click this link, register for a key from NEA. NEA is a national environment agency, or Singapore National Environment Agency. Just quickly fill up these couple of boxes, click that, put in that and you'll get a key for downloading from the APIs. Choose which data sets do we want? Uh, we want the weather. Uh, just, you can click all of it. The nowcast is the one that we'll be using. The nowcast? Well, two-hour nowcast we'll be using for this workshop. But you can click all of it. It's fine too. Once you have done that, take a quick look at the developer's guide. So for most sites that provide APIs, they usually have a developer's guide for the API, how to use the API. Mm -hmm. And this would be your request format. And your key would put, go in there. Okay. Mm -hmm and we'll be doing the nowcast.
pouring before my thing. Okay, set up your URL link. And create a request so you can refer to your previous two workshops whether you use an opener or you use a request sorry previous three workshops <coughs> You don't need that. That's just for you to check whether you got it correct. Okay. If you got it right, you will get an XML response. So the only difference is that if you look at it, JSON is a simpler version of XML, right? So in JSON, this would have been curly bracket, title, colon, to our forecast. And that's it. So very similar. You'll get your key and your value. And this is how you parse an XML object. <laughs> okay. All right. So next one is just a couple of Python codes. Just look through the data. You have your data. This is how you grab a data. You get the timestamp. You get the time value. This here. By doing that. So write a for loop. Look through this data. Get the items you want. So if you check, this is a typical area forecast. You have the forecast. TL stands for... Not sure. TL. I know PC stands for partly cloudy. TL stands for... What? Thunder and lightning, if I'm not wrong. Thunder, lightning in Amokyo. In Bedo, I think. What's TL? This is R. Yes. URL lib request is the R. Because URL lib dot request is quite long. That's okay. All right. Yep, so whatever you import it as, yep, the R represents it. Which one? Okay. 
This one here? Yeah, this four lines. Okay. That's the same. It's just you're replacing the URL, that's all. Exactly the same. Um, the weather. Okay, so whatever data you want, you can go ahead and explore. If you only want to look at the forecast, so this is your forecast for Amokyo, right? So I'll give you an example. If we do this. So this is how it's parsed. It's parsed uh, for a XML object, right? This Objectify is XML's uh, Objectify right here. It's a module called Objectify. So Objectify, we're just parsing the, re the response from the request into parse. You can basically check It's an XML tree. So what they do is they put it into a tree. So what happens with tree? You have to first get the root of the tree and then navigate through your tree. So that's where we get the root and then navigate through your tree. So this is your root. Then you navigate down. Root dot item. Where is it? There you go. Root dot item dot Time. Uh, root dot item dot forecast issue. There you go, forecast issue. And we're getting the time. Okay, similarly, for you to get to the forecast, the two hour forecast, you need to navigate from root dot area. And we are going to iterate the root area and grab all the areas, all the area objects. So this is one area object. And you will get all the areas, the forecast, and the coordinates of the areas. I think SH is showers. LS, I'm not sure. Light shower. So hot. So hot. So hot. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Scroll up. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, no. Who cares about forecast? Okay. So an XML format is like a tree. So you have the top of the tree, your channel. This is channel and where is uh, channel is right at the bottom. So this here only gives you the first 500, right? Okay. So if we do that, Okay, so that's the start channel and the close tab. There you go. So that's the root of your tree. And then this is a branch. You have your title. This is one branch. Right? And then your source. Right? Then your description. Then your item. Item is quite long all the way to here. That's your item. Okay, so what these do is you get root dot item and grab the area. We want the area. Iterate through each area. So one area, two area, and so on and so forth.
So unfortunately, that's all the time we have for data scraping. <laughs> okay. Yeah, time flies. I know when you're having fun. So the work, the notebooks are there. You can go home and they see. Take a look. There's the BS4 Beautiful Soup, which is um, what we use in Python to scrape HTML data. We put all these HTML tags, almost like what you did with the XML, put it all together into a beautiful soup object. And from the beautiful soup object, you can get to the tags. So each tag, you know, is uh, from for the beautiful soup object. And similarly, you can get the attributes. <laughs> and so on and so forth. Okay? So the notebooks are there for you, just run through it. And for Selenium, it's basically uh, HTML pages with JavaScript, we use Selenium. Okay? Again, just run through it. <laughs> and what happens with JavaScript is that because our uh, just a, it's not a static page. So with JavaScript, you have actual scripting. You have to run the script. So we need a driver. So you need to download the driver. This year, we are using PhantomJS, or you can use any of the drivers that are uh, supported by Selenium. That's fine too. Right. And with Selenium, basically what you need to do is you need to get them to do some actions. Basically clicking. Okay, all these clicking actions, you can do that. Okay. Alright. So that concludes for your data scraping. And I will invite Olga next. <laughs>